don't hear. So in other stringed instruments like violin and cello, they're really big on tone production, meaning just getting the best tone out of the instrument. And I feel as guitar players, we can sort of skip that step a little bit. And I'm not talking about dialing in a good tone on the amp or whatever. It's just the tone you're getting from uh, how you pick the instrument or if you use legato. But in this particular video, we're going to focus on the right hand. And if you look at uh, what cellists and violinists do a lot is just practice long notes. Basically, just letting the bow go back and forth like this. And the purpose of that is to really dial in a good consistent sound with the right hand because that's the main tone production thing they have uh, and i know for myself at least i kind of neglected this a lot in the beginning obviously i tried to get a really good tone when i was practicing anything but i didn't really spend that much time just looking at the right hand in this case and i think that's uh, quite a big mistake because you can solve quite a lot of problems when it comes to the right hand technique just by focusing on picking one note and then really listening to the sound you're producing with just a pick alone and then you can find you know what angle you find sounds the best feels the best is the most consistent and all that stuff so this can solve a lot of problems that uh, students come to me with and, and questions that I get about pick depth and you know the angle and all that kind of stuff but that's really best solved by listening to what you're doing because at the end of the day there's no one else that's going to hear your guitar playing more than you so you need to be satisfied with the sound. We just pick a note here on random C and then if you start doing this you're just trying to listen for like I like the sound of this. Maybe you pick back here. You can get a sharp, sharper sound. And maybe the, the pick is very flat. Or maybe you like that sound, but the trick is to find a, a sound that you like. You just try it at different speeds. It's not about playing it super fast. But then you can, you know, speed it up a little bit. And just make sure that whatever angle you have still sounds good at a higher tempo, right? And then you probably will also notice that if you dig in too much, it's not gonna sound very good. And that's sort of the, the pick depth question that I get. Uh, and I've never really thought about that because I've always listened to what I've been doing. But there's a really good idea to spend time on just one note and one string for a while and not, you know, have to do that just because you're working on some sort of, um, you know, tremolo stuff. Uh, instead, just find one note and you can change it after a while, but stick with that note for maybe, you know, 20, 30 seconds at least. Uh, and then try it uh, across all six strings, if you have six strings, uh, and all the different registers of the guitar. And that's a really good warm up as well. Uh, but like I said, it's not about, you know, doing it as fast as you can, it's about finding uh, what sounds really good and also what feels relaxed and natural for you. So a good idea then for you to warm up both your ears and your right hand in this case is to start on the low E string, pick any note, you know, fairly low down. Uh, you can even start with an open string and try to just listen for, for the effect you get depending on where you're at uh, over here. But if you find a sound that you like, stick to that because that's the, the, the point, right? To find what you like the sound of and then try to stick to that so your overall sound will improve. So if I start with a low E string, let's try it at different tempos. But one thing that I notice, for example, is that when I slow down, if I have really fast uh, transitions here, I have a way better sound than if I do this kind of sluggish uh, crossing of the string, right? You can also try this muted. And when you sat here for a while, move up. Let's 
try to listen and also relax. So you want to work yourself up here, right? So, you know, I think it's a big advantage of doing this maybe for, I don't know, two minutes per string even, right? So you can stay quite a while here. But try it up here because it's going to feel very different from down here. And uh, then you go on to the next string once you feel cover the sort of whole distance here, register of the low E string, start maybe with the open A string. And try to get the muted sound. And when you want to get the muted sound, you, you'll find that you don't necessarily need to mute a lot. You just need to find the correct spot here. Uh, and then you continue on like that all across every string. So uh, another thing that you might want to look into is that you have a consistent angle when you get up to the higher strings as well. Because if you stick your hand here, and then the higher up you go pitch-wise, your pick angle will get steeper and steeper. And if you have a too steep of a pick angle, you're gonna get a lot of tick, 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 a lot of pick sound basically. So you kind of want to keep the angle uh, very consistent. And the higher up you get on the, on the fretboard, uh, and also the higher strings, or the thinner strings, you kind of need to really listen for getting a pure tone and not too much of a pick attack. Right? So there's all kinds of nuances here that you will uncover when you work on your Uriah in this fashion. And like I said, just do it for, for, you know, one to two minutes per string. I think two minutes is a really good time investment initially at least. And then once you get used to it more, uh, you, you'll find your tone way quicker. And also actually try with a, without any amp at all. Just turn the volume down to get the, an idea of what the string sounds like when you play it. And once you've done this for a warm up, I think you'll find that when you play just a normal scale, one, you will be quite warmed up in the right hand, but your tone will also get better and better. Uh, now, the tone production is not entirely the right hand, but you can't really fix something if you don't know the problem. So if you don't know for sure that you have a really good tone when you pick the notes at various speeds and you know various registers, it can be easy to, to work on the wrong thing, so to speak, where you might blame the left hand, for example, because the left hand also has uh, a big input here in the, in the tone production. This depends on where you fret here, but that's for another video. Uh, but as a quick tip here, try to be as close to the fret as possible, because when, when you push down uh, the string here, what's actually happening is that here's the, where the, the string gets... Uh, it's between this fret and here that you get the tone. And obviously you don't want to do this, but the further you're off from this point, the worse your tone is going to be. And also it's a good idea to do this for, for just left hand accuracy, to always try to be, be at the, close to the fret basically. And that will help your tone a lot as well, just the cl general clarity of the tone. But try this. And then let me know in the comments how it went. And if you're still watching at this point and you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel. And you're also sure not to miss any of the lessons. Back in the day, I used to have real issues with fast alternate picking when it came to tune off per string. I was fine with three notes per string, but the tune off per string thing was a bit harder to, to crack. So if you struggle with fast alternate picking as well, and you don't know what to practice or for how long, I've created the perfect solution for you in the form of the Pentatonic Picking Power Book. So in this book, you'll find a daily workout that will not only help your pentatonic picking, 
but will also upgrade your overall alternate picking technique. So it contains basically the same exercises I used myself to develop my picking abilities, as well as numerous students over the years that I've given the same exercise to with great results. So I know these exercises work as long as you put in the work. So it's not a quick solution or quick fix. It will still take a lot of work, but at least you have a very easy to follow routine. So if you're up for a big alternate picking upgrade in 2024, I cannot think of a better start.